kids, this is your first lesson um, having to do with our elements of a mystery. We are starting a new book together, but each of you will need for this unit a chapter book picked out either from Epic, Big Universe, or if you have one at home, it should be a chapter book. You'll also need a pencil, your notebook that came home in the plastic bag that your parents picked up from school, and your mystery packet. So you're going to learn today that once a reader realizes that a book is a mystery, you ask yourself two questions. One, what's the mystery here? And then two, who are my crime solvers? So let's look at that a little closer. So the new read aloud is going to be their great detectives. And we're going to look, use this as our sample. And then you'll be trying it on your own with your books. So third grade detectives says that on the cover. So I'm pretty sure it is a mystery, but I'm still going to continue to look over the book like I would usually do. You're gonna read the title. We're gonna read the blurb on the back and then we're gonna look at chapter titles. So first things first, let's even talk about what is a mystery? Well, a mystery could be a crime. It could be against the law, like somebody broke the law, or it could just be something unusual that happened or something that's out of the ordinary that people have never seen before and you don't really have any logical explanation for it. And a crime solver could be the detective or a sleuth, okay? So let me think about this for a minute. This is called The Third Grade Detectives, but the actual title of this part of the series is The Clue of the Left-Handed Envelope. So if I think about it, most people are right-handed. So if it's a clue about the left-handed envelope, envelopes don't have hands. People do, so maybe the person or couple people have left hands and they might be suspects. I don't know. Let's read the blurb on the back and see what that tells us. So everyone loves the new teacher, Mr. Merlin. He used to be a spy. And he knows all of the secret codes and the strange and gross ways that police solve mysteries. Now, there's a mystery in their very own class. Someone sent Amber Lee Johnson an anonymous letter. Noel and Todd want to solve the mystery before anyone else. But first, they have to figure out Mr. Merlin's clues. But first, there is a word in there, anonymous. If you're not sure what that means, it's that that nobody signed the letter. We don't know who it's from. So it's anonymous because we don't know who it's from and she really wants to know. So the mystery is who wrote it? Hmm. Hopefully you jotted that down. You can also be thinking about who the crime solver is. Pause the video and jot that down. Welcome back. Here's what I'm thinking. If you agree with me, look back at your journal, find out in your notebook. I'm thinking this mystery is going to be about an envelope that leads to who wrote to Amber, and that's why it's called the clue of the left-handed envelope. But I still haven't figured out the whole left-handed thing. I have ideas about it. But maybe Noelle and Todd will be the main detectives. But one thing I do know about mysteries is sometimes detectives have sidekicks or somebody that kind of helps them out. So maybe the helpers are the other third graders or Mr. Merlin himself. Is that what you guys are thinking? Look back at your notebook and check. Let's continue. So I did tell you to look at the title and I told you to look at the blurb on the back, but I also told you to look at the chapter titles. So I'm going to look at that ask myself the same question. What's the mystery here and who are the crime solvers? Oh my goodness. My book doesn't have any titles in it for the chapters. Huh. That's okay. It doesn't have it. So I'm going to read it and decide on titles myself. Now the book you're reading might have them, but you can still ask yourself those questions or you can name your chapters too and still be asking those questions. Why would I name it this title and how does that help me decide what the mystery is and who's solving it? So I'm going to read chapter one to you right now. 
Chapter One. It was the first day of the third grade and Noelle was late. She ran down the sidewalk outside the school building. All summer long, Noelle had been looking forward to starting school again. Mrs. Trumbull would be her teacher this year. Everyone loved Mrs. Trumbull. She was the nicest teacher in the whole school. Finally, Noelle reached her third grade classroom. She stopped at the door. There was a man writing on the chalkboard. Something's wrong here, Noelle thought. She looked around. Her friend Tad Sloan was waving to her. Tad lived across the street from Noelle. They did a lot of things together. Noelle thought Tad was more interesting than most of the girls in her class. She hurried over and sat down in the empty seat next to him. Who's the man? She whispered. Mr. Merlin, Tad replied. He's our new teacher. What happened to Mrs. Trumbull? Noelle asked. Oh, she moved, Tad said, and he leaned closer to Noelle. Amber Lee Johnson said Mr. Merlin used to be a spy. Noelle blinked. How did she find that out? Tad shrugged. Noelle looked at Mr. Merlin again. She likes spy shows on television. Maybe she wouldn't miss Miss Trumbull after all. Mr. Merlin stopped writing on the chalkboard. He turned around and faced the class. Good morning, class. I'm Mr. Merlin. I'm your new teacher, he said. I used to be a spy. Beyond Dennis raised his hand. What did you do when you were a spy? Hmm. I caught a lot of other spies, Mr. Merlin said. I used lots and lots of secret codes to do that. Tad leaned over to Noel. Amber Lee said he did those things in foreign countries, he whispered. Noel looked at him. Really? She whispered back. Tad nodded. Going to school is like solving a mystery, Mr. Merlin continued. We're going to solve a lot of mysteries this year. What kinds of mysteries, Amberly asked. Oh, all kinds, Mr. Merlin said. He looked around the classroom. Does anyone here have a mystery we can start with, he asked. Well, sighed. She wished she had a mystery so she could impress Mr. Merlin. I, I have a mystery, Amberly said. What's your mystery, Mr. Merlin asked. Amberly stood up. She waved an envelope at everyone. This came for me in the mail yesterday, she said. I want to know who sent it. What does it say, Mr. Merlin asked. Amber Lee took a letter out of the envelope and started reading. Dear Amber Lee, you are the smartest girl in the world. It's signed an admirer. She looked at Mr. Merlin. Well, if I knew who sent it, she said, I could say thank you. Mr. Merlin smiled. Noelle rolled her eyes at Todd. That's not a mystery, she whispered. Amberly probably sent that letter to herself. Todd nodded his agreement. Okay, Mr. Merlin said, we'll solve the mystery of who wrote Amberly the letter. And he turned around. It's a nice little picture for you. Here she is, eating her little letter. <laughs> I like this illustrator's drawings. He started writing on the chalkboard. And he wrote E E N P in next row P X V O L E. And I'm going to show you that real close. See that? So E E N P X V O L E. But first you'll have to solve a secret code, he said. Why do we have to do that? Leon asked. Why can't we just solve the mystery? Secret codes are fun, Mr. Merlin said. They also help you learn to think better. Well, I already know how to think, Leon said. I don't like to do it too much. Well, you'll want to think about this, Mr. Merlin said. There's a clue in it that will tell you where to start so you can solve the mystery. Hmm, that's the end of chapter one. So I want you to think about that. And I'm thinking about what's the mystery here and who are the crime solvers? I'm still coming up with the same thing that you probably did. So I want you to give this practice with your own book. So look at the book you have. You should start with what you know about mysteries. The title, the blurb on the back, the chapters, the names, and then don't forget if they don't have them, you can give it to them later. But ask yourself, what's the mystery here and who are the crime solvers?
You're going to jot your thoughts down in your notebook next to today's date, 324. Also write your title of your book next to that date. And then jot your thoughts underneath that as you read. Right? Tomorrow, we will discover more ways to solve a mystery before the detective. Be sure to fill out the minutes that you read, the title of your book, and a quick summary of what you read in the Knowledge is Power log. It's linked on slide 16 of my virtual classroom Google slide presentation. Use your notes in your notebook to help you remember to use capitals, periods, and correct spellings. Have fun reading. If you read only a chapter or two in this book and you haven't quite finished your 20 to 30 minutes of reading for the night, you can pick a book of your choice to finish up that. But I'd like you to make sure that you um, fill out the knowledge is power slide on your mystery book. I think that'll be helpful to you later. Thank you, and I will talk to you tomorrow.